Hey guys, it's Mama J. Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we're going to do an animal spotlight on Jackson chameleons. Now these guys are just absolutely amazing to me. And I've had my Jackson for almost about a year now. Now, also in this video, I wanted to let you know that we are going to do the announcement of our giveaway winner. So be sure and stay tuned to the end of the video where we will announce that. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you and tell you that this is a channel where we talk about the passion for reptiles, amphibians, and betta fish. And I sure hope that you'll consider subscribing. Now, without further ado, let's get to today's video. Today we are talking about Jackson's chameleons, and they are known by the scientific name Triceras jacksoni xanthlophus because they have these wonderful three horns and kind of look like a triceratops, don't they? Well, they are native to uh, the mountains of East Africa, specifically the Kenya area. And one thing that I absolutely love about these Jackson chameleons is, well, or any chameleons in general, is that the way that their eyes move. Their eyes can actually look at two separate images at the same time. Their eyes can look in totally different directions, and it's a way that they can kind of totally monitor their environment. So they can be looking for a prey item to eat, plus maintaining the fact that they're not gonna be somebody else's dinner. So that's always a really cool adaptation, I think, um, if you've never gotten to watch a chameleon's eyes, just to get to see how they move so independently of each other is really fascinating. Now, as you can tell from watching Jack, uh, chameleons are very good climbers. And one thing that allows them to do that is the way that their feet are shaped. Their feet are almost shaped like little mittens, and they are able to grip onto the branches really well. Now, when everybody thinks about chameleons, the first question that I always get is, wow, do they turn all kinds of crazy colors? Well, chameleons do have a special cell in their body called chromatophores, and that is what allows them to change color to some extent. But um, unlike some people think, if you know you walk in front of something really patterned, then a, a chameleon is automatically going to turn into that exact pattern. Uh, that's not really the case. But each chameleon can color up in its own way. Um, with a Jackson's chameleon, you will see different shades of green, uh, kind of a yellow, green and blue, a little bit of a blue tint to them. And that really is, uh, those things come out in relationship to their mood, um, temperature, uh, the time of day, different things like that uh, can really affect how their patterns and colors are. One thing that is really fun to get to see uh, that I've heard other chameleon keepers talk about is at nighttime when they get ready to go to sleep, they do get a very camouflaged pattern to them. It's very much of a splotchy pattern. And of course, that's a way for them to camouflage and keep themselves safe while they're sleeping at night. But many chameleon uh, keepers that I have read call it chameleon pajamas. And it's so cute when I go to turn the lights out. And I know that Jack has really wanted to go on to bed. His color has changed and he has put on the typical chameleon pajamas. It's a very lighter color and it blends in beautifully with leaves and branches. Pretty amazing how God created all of these animals uh, with such a way for them to protect themselves. Now, unlike some species, a Jackson's chameleon is uh, one species of chameleons that actually have live uh, birth. Um, they do not like eggs like other reptiles, but they actually give birth to live babies. And I've seen some videos on this recently, and it is just absolutely amazing to see the tiniest of chameleons uh, just unfold on a leaf and immediately start walking around. Now, as far as enclosures, these guys need a big space. Uh, one of my favorite type of enclosures for chameleons is the Reptibreeze cage. Um, it has very good airflow in it. 
and um, it allows it has a very tall area for you to be able to uh, weave branches and vines and all kinds of uh, foliage. These guys really feel secure the more foliage that you have in the tank. Um, in my case, I use uh, a live umbrella plant as well as uh, just some artificial plants to fill in around the top. Um, these guys will need a, uh, a UVA, UVB light. They do need a heat source, but one of the main things that a Jackson's Chameleon needs is uh, proper humidity. Now, um, these guys are not an impulse buy. They really do need a lot of time and planning uh, for your cage. And for me, as a Jackson's Chameleon owner, probably the hardest thing has been trying to get the humidity right. And I really, really recommend that you get a misting system if you are uh, considering a chameleon. Um, it, it really is a critical thing for them. I have a Miss King system running on my tank. I absolutely love them. They are a pricey system, but in my opinion, it is so worth it for the health of your animal. So um, if you're thinking about a chameleon, invest in a misting system. I promise you that that is a, a really important tool to have as a hobbyist. Um, it's important to also you know, even hand spray your uh, tanks a couple of times a day to make sure that they get proper humidity so that they can shed. Um, I also run a dripper system on my tank. Uh, it's very good for them to be able to have uh, a place in the tank that they can go and get water anytime that they need it. And they seem to be able to drink more from like a dripping water or something natural like they would drink water off of the leaves. So for me, a dripping system has also been a really good feature. Now you're talking about all of this water, so you're thinking, okay, where is all of this water going? Well, that is my next set of advice for you, is you need some type of a drainage system for your tank. Now I have my tank over um, sort of a drainage um, big tub type thing so that I can run any excess water that comes in the bottom of the tank into this reservoir and then I can drain that appropriately. Another thing that I do is I have a bucket in the back of the tank underneath uh, my dripper system and I have a little screen over the top of that just to keep Jack from getting in it but um, that is something that I go and empty every day and that has worked extremely well for me so um, those are two tips that hopefully might be helpful to you if you're thinking about a Jackson Chameleon. Now as far as diet these guys eat um, all kinds of insects, uh, crickets, uh, Jack loves wax worms uh, which you can tell he's had a few in his day, um, dubia roaches, and things of that nature. Overall, Jackson chameleons make wonderful pets. They are very much more an observational animal. Uh, Jack is very good. He does tolerate me uh, handling him, and I do take him out to uh, some of my animal shows where I'm uh, talk to kids about animals, and he has tolerated that quite well. But overall, um, it's if you do handle your Jackson's chameleon, it's it's nice chameleon etiquette to just allow them to kind of do their own thing. Uh, Jack likes to kind of perch on my shoulder, sort of like a parrot, so that's kind of a fun thing. But overall, these guys are simply amazing animals, and I. You know, if you can put the time and the research into planning your habitat and your cage, um, they are such a rewarding animal to be able to have. Okay, we've come to the part of the video that I think we're both excited about. And I'm a little bit nervous even putting the names in the my critter keeper. I thought, well, how appropriate is that for a um, little thing to announce our winner in? So we have had... 30 people over the last week that have commented on my videos and so if you have done that within the last seven days then you are entered into our contest for uh, this month 
and uh, hopefully this is something that I can do on a periodic basis, but just a way for me to say thank you to you guys for watching and supporting me, but also to encourage you as a hobbyist. And so let's get to it. Uh, this is totally at random. I have folded up everybody's names and put it in here and we'll uh, uh, shake it up really good here and pull out a name. Are you guys ready? Okay, this is live on videotaped recorder. How about that? <laughs> and can you get the lid off? I need like a drum roll or something. Are, are you guys excited? I'm, I'm pretty excited. Okay. And the winner of the $10 Amazon gift card is... S maniism. So forgive me if I'm butchering your name here. I will put your name down on um, in editing here, and I will put your name down at the bottom so that you can uh, see that you are the winner. And what I need for you to do is that if you will personal message me on Instagram uh, with your email address. That's the only thing that I need from you in order to be able to send you the virtual gift card. and uh, Or you can always post your email address on the video. So either one. Uh, hope to hear from you here in the next uh, day or so. And I will get that uh, Amazon gift card uh, shipped out to you. So congratulations. And hope you guys have a great rest of your week.